Hey folks, it's Steve Wilmus and Matt Keita, and we are back with another episode of the Risk Control Show. We hope you all have survived Hurricane Hillary. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I do apologize for not getting something out earlier on the hurricane. Normally, we're pretty proactive, and I just we just got all yeah on that one. I I mean, I we were all doing our own things and trying to prepare and that kind of stuff, but. Uh, at any rate, I did see some of the damage in Palm Springs. It looked pretty gnarly. Um, they're they're completely cut off right now because uh, the tent is washed out to the east and to the west, and apparently the emergency services is also cut off from general access to most of the city. So I was like, wow. Um, I know they're they're being proactive. The state and the local authorities are being proactive right now to try and get everybody situated right. out there. Well, maybe they'll have to call in DeSantis and have that bridge built in four days. And <laughs> there you, know, you go. <laughs> uh, I mean it. It it's a mess, and uh, you know recovery is going to start. So I think it's yeah. important to get your folks in place for that. And we've got some great contacts. I don't want to overwhelm them, so I'm not going to just throw his name out there uh, right yeah. now because it's got so much going on with all these cities, but. Um, contact yeah. us and you know depending on the size of your project and stuff like that we could always talk talk about it but yep i i wanted to talk about in addition to the hurricane forklifts <laughs> <laughs> so, yes uh, over the weekend prior yeah. to uh prior to this i was out picking up supplies mm -hmm. and i saw a rental forklift sitting in the parking lot uh, near one of the stores I was going into. And okay. I thought, oh, yeah, let me, let me just show a little picture of this. It, you know, it's just the, uh, it's an old Yale GPT uh, 050 MXN is what it is. And the, uh, the forklift itself looked really good from a distance. And I thought, oh, this will be great. I'll take some pictures. <laughs> You know, right. I, I always I love when I'm out, just grab some pictures of things, some close up details. And I was kind of in a hurry. So I was like, uh, let me snap this, snap that, snap this, snap that. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, let me get this. Let me. Oh, let me take a picture like this. I wasn't really looking at all the details. I could tell from a few things right away, like, oh, I noticed, hey, they put new hoses on, right? Let me show this. Right. Because this is a good one, too. They put some new hoses on. Hey, that looks fantastic until you start <laughs> to look up close. So, <laughs> um, I, oh, I also noticed right here, I'll show this. This is the uh, the pedals. They have great tread on the pedals. Set screw for the, you know, the uh, governor's kind of uh, pretty, looks pretty good. It's not bent, all that kind of stuff. So, I'm like, oh. Right. Oh, this looks pretty good. And then, you know, I looked at, at the uh, wood paneling above um, the, the rack, above the operator compartment. And I know that right. people do that all the time to keep the sun out and that stuff. That's right, fine. right. So you're, you're looking at some of those things, you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they got some things marked, good stickers. Then I'm like, oh, I get home. I pull these pictures up um, a little later, look at these a little closer. I do, and I'm like, wow, this is a mess. The other thing I noticed was the forks seemed mm -hmm. to be really long. <laughs> really long. <laughs> yes. I, I, I actually have to kind of like do this picture in, in all so you can see the full length of the forks. You, you mean, really do. It, it's, I, I wish I had been there with you, Steve, because I already I said this off channel how, how I literally could lay down, and I'm not a tall guy, but I'm not that short. Uh, I could lay down on these forks and I could fully, fully prostrate with my legs out. Right. And, and there would still be plenty of fork left out beyond my feet. Right. Which is, which is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I could do the same thing, and I'm six one. Yeah, <laughs> I probably could have done the Superman and still yeah. not reach the. I, de I definitely could have done the Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and you know okay so you guys are saying yeah well what's the problem with that like why what's the big deal they're just long forks well uh yeah they are long forks and yeah you can put long forks on a, a fork lift but let's take a look i'm showing the picture right now matt of you know yale's from yale the gt right zero zero fifty uh, right and you see the short little red forks on this and it's like huh well what are the forks supposed to be <laughs> right <laughs> if, if you look at their their sheet here the forks are supposed to be 42 inches long 42 inches long that's three and a half feet for those of you not good at math <laughs> yeah, three and a half feet now we know a pallet is typically 48 by 48 Yep. And why would a fork be six inches shorter? Well, <laughs> there's a reason for that. That is the maximum capacity, right? And load moments. Yep. And we want to keep we want to keep load moments from uh, occurring at the tip of the forks. We want to make sure that our maximum capacity is as close as possible to. Oh, I got it here. Pictures opening up individually, Matt. Uh, <laughs> but, but we want to make sure that that maximum capacity is always within what it's supposed to be in. Yep. So you know, of course, I'm always looking for I'm always looking for great pictures of data ID plates. Right. This is always right. I don't know why it is, but whenever we do training, we always put up a picture of the data ID plate. And if you just search the internet, they're like all crap. I can never find a great one. I, I have to go to like a brand new sales uh, shop and actually get one there. But you right. know, so I, I opened up the, I mean, I took a picture of the data ID plate. And guess what, Matt? As you can see, <laughs> someone stuck a sticker all over the top of it. Yeah, and it, you can't. Uh, yeah, it's just you can't read anything uh, on there. Uh, although uh, one thing that is clear is at the very top, the attachment clearly reads forty-two inches in length for the forks. Right. So, <laughs> so that that part wasn't covered by the sticker. That part wasn't covered by the sticker. So you can't use that excuse. Yeah. So you can't say, "Oh, well, Steve just found." some sheet and highlighted some line no it really is for the oh. the 50 mxn okay i'm yeah. telling you it's for the 50 xmx what makes <laughs> this so freaking crazy to me is that it's a goddamn rental yeah yeah exactly exactly so like i it, it makes you wonder right okay so did they rent it and then make the changes themselves did they no. have some conversation with the rental company and say, hey, can you do this and provide this for us? Um, which, if I'm the rental company, I'm going like, no, I, that liability, you're gonna, you're, our machine is gonna, is gonna tip over. <laughs> I'd be what? What are you doing with our machine? These are the kinds of questions I'd ask. But clearly, that's not what's happening here, <laughs> right? And clearly, whoever inspected this thing and took delivery of it uh, didn't. Mm -hmm. Did not. Yeah. So did not. Uh, this comes up a lot like you get equipment I, we actually had someone die on an aerial lift at one of our clients um they they rented the aerial lift the alarms and the um gauge for the level indicator was okay not working oh no yeah, and so they got on unlevel ground, it tilted over, and he fell, like 65 feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it killed him. Of um, course. So, does this stuff matter? Absolutely. No. And so Absolutely I, I want to show, uh, Matt, I'm going to show, like, let's go back to this, which is these brand new hoses. They look okay. fantastic, right? And then you go down yeah. here to the lower portion of those hoses where you can see that the connections are new, right? Like it, you can tell right. it's a new hose. They marked the, uh, the spin indicator 
right? So if they have any vibration or if the nuts start to come loose, you can tell. And they did that with the green line. But if you look at the green line, Matt, yeah, you can see it's not lined up. No, it's not. And that's yeah, just no, it's not. That's just a hundred percent laziness, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is it? It's, it's or 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 just not being focused on the details. Like, oh, it, it, it feels like it's screwed in. It's well, good it's enough. Way, I'm just gonna move on. You it's know? all the way screwed in. The problem is they should have erased the line mm -hmm. and put a new line on there. So it's all matched up. Right. Um, or they had disconnected, reconnected. But either way, the laziness comes in in the fact that they didn't connect. I mean, they didn't take the time to erase and put on lines. And so that's the first indicator that you go, hmm, maybe these mechanics over there don't care as much as they should. And I, I you know, I don't know who did it. Uh, I'm not right. trying to point fingers. I'm trying to trying to give you as the person taking receipt of a rental vehicle, like, hey, check out where you're renting from and make sure these things are good. Here's another one, and this is the the wood plank above. They put this yes. on with a tie down strap. The tie down strap is dangling all over, right? So right. What, what happens when that tie down strap, the loose end, you know, the, the tail end, decides that it's going to come loose, fly around, and get caught on a tree, a shelving unit, um, a part of the cargo somewhere, you know? Right. Wherever it is. Get, work, get, get worked up in the gears of the mast? When you're going up uh, it's and down? too far from the mast, but okay. you know, how about dangle back in your kill switch? Right. You know? And so hey, I get it. You you want to put some shade up there, but take the time. Again, take the time. <laughs> Roll this thing up and lock it in. I mean, it's not that hard. And then you get into yeah. uh we we had this happen where uh, one of our clients had, like, I'm showing the Gatorade bottles now, Matt. Okay. You know, and the, the extension cord, uh, the power strip. Like, it's behind the seat. And if you have kill switches built into the seat, well, what you want there is for that kill switch to engage. Remember kill switch engage? Damn. Yeah, I do. The band was great, I, 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 but I definitely want the kill switch engaging if I'm on if I'm on those that machine, and uh, I want that to be able to stop if uh, so, you know to stop any emergency from happening. I'll say that exactly. <laughs> yeah, and so hey, Gatorade's great until it screws you up, um, or this mm -hmm. cord slips under there and disengages the kill switch. Right, the kill switch works like your brake pedal. There's pressure on it. Push down, the brake pedal, the little switch comes out. That engages your brake light. Same thing kind of happens here. As the seat goes up, it's up, and boom. But if there's a cord jammed in there, then there's no right. way for that to fully engage. So it doesn't enact. We had that happen, and the guy got off, and the lawnmower blade was still spinning, and bam. You know, so these are... Like little, little things that add up to big problems. But the biggest problem here I want to go back to is this long fork. And Jeez. I know. And if we look at this picture, this is um, kind of a, a three-quarter angle top view. It has, I, I marked, I put some arrows on this picture. If you can see, there's a little bit of red paint on there. I'm thinking that's probably like the tip indicator for them to, you know, show either this fork, <laughs> these two long forks were either on the proper right. forklift and were used for something they wanted to indicate when they were fully through, or... It's an indicator that, hey, you probably shouldn't use this long fork here. But this fork, 
is way greater than 42 inches. Every time oh, yeah. we get an inch out, you know, it changes a little bit, but the maximum capacity, you can just generally say for every inch away from the mast, you're going to drop about 100 pounds of maximum capacity. Yep. So this forklift comes in at, what was it? 48, 48. Yeah, I think it's 4,800. If I recall, it's a little bit hard because the sticker was over that portion on the data ID plate, but but it looks like it's about 4,800. Yeah, 48, I think 4,850 or 4,880. But just think, drop 100 pounds, drop 100 pounds, drop 100 pounds. Now, if we look at that load center, again, going back mm -hmm. to our data ID plate, you can see like all those are in there. But the right. point is, point is that if you're 42 inches is what you're supposed to be, and you're out at the tip, because what do people always do? They just <laughs> barely get in there, and they always leave. Oh Even yeah. When we do our training, they'll leave six, eight inches. You know, they picked up the pallet. So yeah, they put a 42 inch fork on here, so that you had to go all the way in and pick mm -hmm. the pallet up all the way. But if you come out. Right, and you're way past yeah. that 42 inches, and you're just using the tip. You've probably, I mean, what did we calculate this thing to be? Maybe, maybe 65 inches in length. Yeah, let's call it. Let's call it. Yeah, let's call. Let's call it 66. That's uh, five and a half feet. Yeah, we'll okay. be generous. 66 feet. So that's 24 inches more than what it's designed for, and right. it does state on the on the yeah you know under the under the ID information that's available online for this model that the load normal load center is 24 inches. Right. So 24 inches. It's a 42 inch fork that's supposed to be on it, right? Mm -hmm. And then boom. Load center right here at the top, 24 inches. Rated capacity. Uh we're at five thousand pounds. Maybe a slightly newer older model there. Um, I'm trying to see else right here that's great. But point being is, get on here and pick up your load at the end of that fork. You got a huge problem. Oh yeah, you're going. Oh yeah, you're going over. Yeah, you're definitely going over. Look, it was just like. Um... Just like I was saying on the scissor lift train that we just completed, that I believe is currently available on Udemy and on Dollar Training Club, correct, Steve? It is. Um, I said during that training, you know, we make the point: it physics doesn't care right. <laughs> how big your your equipment is. If you go over the capacity, if you Put yourself out there. You carry a load that's too far out from the load center and your equipment is not rated to handle that extension or that much weight. It's going to tip over. It's a matter of physics. Yep. <laughs> it's the matter of physics. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice forklift, but again, size doesn't matter. This is right? like one instance in life where size doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! I, but but okay. So you go to rent a forklift. I would say probably sixty percent of the time, people that rent the forklifts haven't used it in a while. Probably, yeah. Because uh, if you have to rent a forklift, it's not part of your regular operation, so that right? makes sense. Exactly. Um, haven't been trained in a long time, if at all. Right. Yep. Don't really know what they're doing. Um. In this case, uh, where this was located, I'm going to assume younger kids okay. working, you know, so maybe maybe the owner puts someone that's not even 18 on this thing. Oh, good heaven. Right? And, and you're just kind of going, okay, so what happens next, right? But this thing adds up the extra long forks. You should be able, if you're renting this, if you mm -hmm. are in charge of your employees, right? You're in charge of safety. You should have a good enough eye to look at this like I did and go, wow, 
immediately. Those forks are long. That dangling um, uh, ratchet strap is a problem. The hose connections yep. are a problem. That ID plate's a problem. Um, you know what? Maybe this isn't the place I want to work with. Right? right? Maybe this isn't the place that I want to grab a forklift from. And, you know, again, it could be a one-off thing, but if they're just slapping the stuff together to push it out, that's a problem for you and your employees. So you have to take the time to you know, grab a forklift that's properly put together. And you got to yes. understand what you're doing. So with that, all I can say is, you know, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, if you're not going to do on-site training, at least go through our course. That's a buck. No, it's five, yeah. it's five bucks. We run on Fridays. We run a big social media push to drop the price down to one dollar. You get four bucks off. It's it's a buck. If you can't beat it, take the training. Take the training. Yeah. Get to know this stuff. Um, and yeah, it's tremendously helpful. There's so much information in there. And, and when you're not used to working with equipment like this, with a powered industrial truck of, of any variety, like you don't have general experience with this sort of thing. It, it's a great training to really dip your feet and understand what the hazards are, what the basic controls and operations are, what you need to know about when you hop on that thing. It, it, it's, it's tremendously helpful. So, and, and it's, it's so feasible to take that training. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. I would rather that you take it in person and actually watch. I have one of us watch you operate. Yeah, there's so I mean, I can't even tell you like how many times we get forklift operators. And again, they're not they're not doing it all the time, but they get on and they're nervous. But the year old men that are nervous and they're shaking and yep. this and that. And you know, yep. it's uh, it's not that scary, but it is because. They understand what the threat to their safety is. And yeah. that, that biggest threat is tip overs and, and maximum capacity, residual capacity. Like, like Matt was saying uh, offline here, uh, you put these forks on, which are already <laughs> <laughs> reducing your residual capacity, right? Those right. are 24 inches, if that's what it is. I mean, these things yep. are long. So, again, uh, at extra capacity, Whatever it may be is gone yep because you added the weight of that fork and trust me the forks they're not super heavy but hey 50 pounds out that distance 100 pounds out that distance yep that creates that's a i was thinking about 100 pounds out out that distance is gonna is gonna severely impact that load capacity yep the load capacity load moments going up 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 you know so Take the time to really look at it. Go out, and if you're deciding that you want to rent equipment, that's great. But go out and check out your service provider, the rental company. You know, talk with them. How do they maintain this stuff? I, I mean, I'm not real concerned that someone interchanges forks on these forklifts. You know, like they they're going to get a lot of damaged stuff, but it should be of the right length. Yeah, and I, I'm not. Not real concerned that someone throws uh, plywood up there, but if you're gonna do that, do it right. Yeah, you know. And but I am concerned that the hoses aren't lined up, makes it hard to do the inspection. So anyway, that's what I got. I I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Check us out on all our great platforms, right, Matt? You got anything else to add right. to that, man? <laughs> no, it, it's just, it's just a, incredible to me that, I mean, I'm, I'm, this whole time I'm trying to wrap my, wrap my mind around what kind of loads they might be trying to use this on. <laughs> you know what, you know, long, like maybe they're double palleting, you know, get two pallets in a row. I mean, well, that's 96 inches, so. I don't, I don't know no, about I that, think but maybe, I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe just long, uh, maybe carpets. Right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but again, just not on just not on this lift. 
unless you have really understood the capacities. Well, I, I know I know how this is useful, Steve. Um, back when I was a kid, we used to have a bunk bed. It's an easy way to get that mattress up there is pull that forklift in and <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd like raise the bed. And... <laughs> I'd like to see that in your house, silly boy. Okay. We've gone off the deep end. Hillary, <laughs> Hurricane Hillary's uh, <laughs> swamped your mind. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Been known to happen. Yeah. All right. Well, check us out. We're on YouTube. We are on the blog. We're on Udemy. We got our own dollar training club. I want to spend the money on Udemy. That's fine. Not saying it. We're there because you know you guys like to be there too. Um, but if you save the money, you can get it through Dollar Training Club. We're always adding new content. We just added scissor lift training, which is different than yep. our aerial lift and is different than our forklift. We just added combating workplace violence so there's a lot of good stuff out there what else do we add matt we we added uh fall, fall protection oh fall protection yeah definitely yeah. fall protection in your scissor lifts important so three new courses right there for you enjoy yeah. don't forget to subscribe get out there follow us and you know if you see us out there in the field please say hi if you got any questions or come on up yeah yeah bring them on up talk to you.